as Mike said before, I just graduated in June. Um, I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about you know why I came to Trent, that kind of thing. My, per my perception coming into Trent of what a Bachelor of Arts meant to me and what I thought I would get out of it after I graduated and, and so forth. And then I'll talk a little bit more about you know what's going on at Quaker here in Peterborough. Everybody knows about it. Everybody smells it almost every day. <laughs> uh, and it does smell delicious inside, especially when we're making like maple products and it smells like maple bacon inside and you get very hungry. Um, but essentially the, j the journey started probably like a, a lot of students and a, a lot of first generation students. Uh, I was the first uh, kid in my family to go to university. My dad went to college. My mom uh, did high school. Um, but really my choices coming out of high school were um, you know, go to university, take history, because I love history, I've always been a history buff, or go to college uh, for human resources. Human resources being far more um, applicable into, in terms of going to directly to the job market. Uh, but th that was the debate of, you know, choose the job stream or choose what I actually cared about in terms of a passion. Uh, and after a little bit of debate with myself, I ended up choosing uh, the passion. I came here for history. And over the course of those uh, seven years that I was here, don't tell anybody, um, I was always asked at every family function, you know, what are you going to do with a history degree? And very much attuned to what Mike was saying, I just kept answering, you know, anything. I can do anything I want. I'm not tied down. Literally, the world is my oyster. Um, and that was sort of my attitude you know, ever since first year. Um, so when I first came to Trent, again, everybody might remember it as students. You know, you, ISW, you're there. Uh, the college system is really, really pumped up, and you're absorbing it all. But what really caught my attention about the colleges, at least, and the experience at Trent was how much you get out of the out-of-classroom experience. You know, it's not just sitting in class, listening to the, you know, the lecture, doing the readings. It's about taking the majority of your time as a student and what you can do with that outside of the classroom. And so from the very beginning, I started getting involved. Started very small, looking at ISW, being an ISW leader, co-chair, moving into cabinet, doing a lot of functions there. Uh, you know, spent four years at cabinet, and then moving over to the student union and doing some political activism, but more importantly, actually running a business. And that was, to me, the experience that I would take from my university experience as being the most relevant to what I do now. You know, managing people, managing budgets, being accountable, uh, managing a team. Uh, very, very similar, I, I would say, um, in terms of all the committees that I was on and whatnot. Uh, but if you look at, I'm sure most programs have seminars. But just picture yourself in those seminars where there's, you know, 15, 20 uh, students or whatnot. And, you know, everybody has their own opinion. You're always looking at... Um, you know, the sort of roles individuals are playing in those seminars. You know, there's the, the kid that didn't do the readings. There was, uh, you know, the, the, the kid that doesn't want to say anything, you know, even though they're right kind of thing. And you can sort of develop a, a relationship with everybody as an interpreter almost. And, and you want to be the person getting the flow of the room going. And that's sort of what I um, tried to do at all of my seminars, as well as uh, on, on the student union, is getting everybody around the table always engaged and almost being a translator in a sense. So, and I, I'll say how that's relevant to my experience now at Quaker, eventually later. Um, but when I started coming towards the end of my term at Trent, you know, it's scary. You know, you're looking at your debt and looking, oh my goodness, I have to pay this off soon. Um, you're looking at some success stories on friends maybe who have jobs lined up for them already. Um, but maybe you're with the rest of the folks and you just have no idea what you're going to do. What I did know I wanted to do, though, was I wanted to do it on my own. I didn't want to ask anybody for help coming out of the gate. I just wanted to, you know, hit the resume, get out there and start talking to people. And I did that for about six weeks. Um, did my resume up. I probably spent at least six to eight hours a day at the Whistle Stop Cafe filling out resumes, you know, sending them all over Canada, sometimes the world, uh, and just getting almost nothing back in that time frame of April, May. And so at the end of six weeks or so, you know, living on my friend's futon, um, I said, okay, I, I need to start doing some outreach here. I need to start using the relationships that I had and whatnot. Um, and so I did, and that's wh what ended up actually getting me uh, the job I have now, or at least the interviews for these jobs. And I, I want to emphasize, too, uh, you know, the experiences you're probably going to hear today, 
you know, I, 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 me personally, at least, I'm not going to be giving career counseling advice, right? Like we have the Career Center, uh, you know, so those folks are, are the experts, so go to them. But all I can do is share with my experience. Um, but, you know, relationships that you have and that you develop through school, whether it be friends, parents, or, you know, the employment that they currently have or whatnot, you know, using those relationships to your benefit uh, is a good thing, I, I, I would say, at least in my experience. And so that was what gave me the interview at a couple places, and as well as opportunity. Um, so, yes, I ended up getting an offer from uh, Quaker here in Peterborough, and uh, now my fiber intake has skyrocketed. Um, so... But again, that only gets you the interview. You have to do it yourself. Um, so going back to Trent, you know, it was the experience I gained, you know, outside of that classroom that has allowed me uh, to to function. And and uh, look, it looks like anyway, my six months probation is almost up. Uh, but it looks like a promising career um, at, at a very large corporation. Quakers, of course, owned by PepsiCo uh, Corporation. And you know, having a Bachelor of Arts degree in a, in a huge multinational corporation is uh, rare, for, for one. Um, you know, I'll go back to the seminar stories kind of thing. When I'm sitting around the table every day at our production meetings, I'm the only one with a history degree. Um, there's usually engineers and electricians and everybody who went to university for something very specific, and they're very, very intelligent in their field. But what they all have a challenge with is understanding each other. And you know, what I sort of develop as, as I did in school, was, you know, you, folks are trying to explain their situation to each other, and sometimes there's a sense of urgency or whatnot. You're really, because you're a generalist, you find yourself tying those people together. These, these people are experts in their own area, as I said, but they cannot always speak to each other. So you find yourself being a bridge, a relationship bu builder around that table, and that's what I've found uh, as, as a huge strength to my experience so far. Um, but other than that, in terms of looking around, I, the first thing that came to my mind when I accepted the offer from Quaker, I knew they were from, Pe from owned by PepsiCo. And of course, being at Trent, you know, you're taking all kinds of courses, uh, whether it be in human geography, history, uh, politics, and, uh, you know, corporations are not always the good guys in town. And so accepting an offer from Quaker was also a challenge to me personally. Um, you know, my first year here as president, we were phasing in the anti-bottled water campaign here at Trent. And, of course, PepsiCo owns Aquafina. Here we are. So, you know, that, that, that's, that's a bit of a debate on a personal level that you might find, as, or that I find as well. Um, but in terms of the workplace right now, um, I, I find in a lot of areas I'm actually more equipped to deal with the challenges of day-to-day, -to, -day, to deal with, you know, people relationships. Um, as a supervisor, you're always managing people and, and their expectations and, and their needs and wants. Um, I feel I'm actually in a better position um, to advance, um, to succeed, and, and to build a team far better than the folks around the table who are, you know, experts in their fields. Um, again, that's just my experience, um, but, you know, that, that's where we are with that. Um, like I said, I want to, uh, you know, I want to save a lot of time for Q&A, but, you um, you know, moving forward, um, as soon as you come out of the gate, you know, how many, everyone here is unemployed, right? Is that true? <laughs> Everyone's looking for a job? Yes. Um, coming out of the gate, it's, it's very important to remain persistent. You know, you, you can't stop, you know, when you're looking for jobs. If you want to do the, um, the individual thing like, like I did, I, I suggest you try it, but don't try it for too long. Everybody needs a job uh, coming forward. Just by a show of hands, how many folks either graduated with debt or are going to have some kind of debt when they graduate. Right. So let's say, you know, half or so, right? So, you know, this is what we're looking at in terms of, um, you know, when you graduate, the expectations of society, all that kind of stuff. But essentially look to yourself, sit down, have that honest conversation with yourself about who you are, what your strengths are, uh, and then again, use those relationships that you gain as part of the trend experience and, and why you're here. Use your friends, use your family, that kind of thing. But anyway, I'll leave the rest for Q&A. You can hear the rest of the titans of industry coming up here. Thanks.